of those four University of Idaho students. Police now sifting through hundreds of tips, thousands of pieces of evidence. Arcana Whitworth has been on this story for us. Spoke with the father now of one of the victims. Kane, good morning. Hey, TJ, good morning. Kaylee Gonzalez's father told me they moved to this region of Idaho because it was safe. There had not been a homicide in Moscow in seven years. And now this morning, he tells me the only thing worse than losing his daughter, her best friend, and two others is not knowing why or who is responsible. This morning, students on edge at the University of Idaho as the search for the killer in that brutal quadruple homicide enters its third week. It is disconcerting that there is somebody out there who's done such a horrible thing and they haven't been caught. The school posting this notice on social media Monday, writing increased security will be on site for the remainder of the semester. Steve Gonzalez, the father of one of the victims, 21-year-old Kaylee, now shedding new light on what happened that night in his first sit-down interview. It was fast and uh, nobody suffered and nobody felt like, like that kind of pain. Two other roommates survived on the ground floor, waking up several hours later, calling friends over when their roommates were unresponsive. Do you know the reason why the initial concern was that a roommate was passed out? I know the girls reached out via texting and calling, so I, I can only assume that by the phones being ignored, knowing how my daughter is, not going to ignore calls and texting. Officials maintain the murders happened between 3 and 4 a.m. and that the first 911 call was made around noon. Just hours later, Steve was informed of his daughter's death, not by police, but by family members on campus. Let's call Maddie. And then you realize Maddie's gone too. Madison Mogan was Kaylee's lifelong best friend. The pair seen together in their final hours of life, laughing and ordering late night food before getting a ride home together in what Steve described as a sorority designated driver service. You can't imagine sending your girl to college and then they come back in a, you know, in an, an urn. In an urn. And now the families of the victims growing frustrated by the lack of answers. I haven't earned the ability to uh, to grieve the way that I, I want to grieve. I want to be able to have justice first. Now, Steve says that he does plan to speak at the candlelight vigil tomorrow. He went on to say he doesn't want the city of Moscow to fall apart over this. And TJ, in a show of solidarity, that candlelight vigil will be held in various locations across this entire state. All right, Kana, we thank you so much. And I want to bring in now ABC News contributor and former FBI agent Brad Garrett. Uh, the family's looking for answers. Some details uh, as they continue to trickle out, some of the new details we're hearing. What stands out to you? So you have four people killed on two different floors of a house, which would certainly suggest, TJ, that somebody at least knew the basic layout of the house. Think about how long it would take to go from victim to victim so somebody had patience. Uh, the, the police have described a combat-type knife, uh, so the person apparently went there to really do what they ended up doing. So once you've eliminated, and I assume this has happened, sort of the immediate circle, you know, college students that are around these kids, people that may have threatened one of them, stalked them, whatever. I'm not hearing anything that supports a killer in that group. So what do you have to do if there's not an immediate connection? You have to go to sort of a wider circle. You would look at, for example, maybe or maybe not somebody older. I only suggest that because this crime appears to be very focused and the person had a comfort level in the house. And so as a result, do you start looking at sort of uh, relationships that are really aren't tight with these kids? See, somebody they met occasionally, somebody that may have come to the house to attend a party. Apparently this was a big party house. And so that makes it more difficult. Less connections makes it more difficult many times to solve a crime. And you're also going to have to look, and the police have already talked about this, of similar type crimes in other parts of the country, in particular in the Northwest, which they're saying initially there is no connection, and there may not be, but you're really going to have to look at this bigger circle that I'm suggesting. Well, a wider circle, somebody that knew the layout, you, you, some of those details, but what, what type of person, and somebody could argue, what kind of monster uh, are they looking for? So if, it's a, if somebody that's done this before, I mean, TJ, people who do this kind of stuff, 
get a big thrill out of doing it. Now we don't know if it's that type of person, but that it could be something like that. It, the idea that you killed four people just tells me that this was sort of driven by something you intrinsically wanted to do, less so than maybe one student mad at another student. Uh, you can only imagine the fear in that community knowing that person is still out there. Brett Gary, we appreciate you as always. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.